I know I should be doing this, but there's a video. I just want to take a video. We're in Wales now, <clears throat> on the way to the lake, and just look at the weather. There were reports of snow, and uh, obviously here is where the snow fell. So, you know, we had almost summer-like weather last week, and uh, this week it's it's winter again <laughs> well we'll see how we go today i've got lots to do if it's too cold we pack up and we go home as you can see i've got a woolly hat on and if you look at the boats <laughs> we have got a sprinkling of hail and frost and that is pretty solid pe Oy, piece of ice on there um and if you look at the sort of hills around, you'll see a spattering of snow on them. Actually, these ones over here. And down here where there's a bit of water comes in, you can see, oh, there's a tiny bit of ice and frost on there. Frost here. It's two degrees Celsius and it's freezing. I've even got my gloves on. It's freezing. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna sail in this. I think what I'm gonna do is I've actually brought my spare gaff, and there's a really good reason for this. Um, it's got a pre-drilled hole in the top there, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, and that will become apparent uh, later on in the video. <laughs> Everything's frozen, even this cloth is frozen, as you can see. <laughs> it's like sailing in the Arctic. There's a really good YouTube channel I follow. I think they're called uh, Arctic Allure. Is it sailing there? Two Nor Norwegian people sailing in the Arctic, and uh, it feels like that today. So I'm going to get the uh, the mast up, and I'm going to attach this new gaff as well. Um, and. Uh, We'll start kind of, we need to get the new sail up as well, the old sail up, which is the one I'm going to reef. We'll start taking some measurements. So I've got the mast up. Um, <clears throat> you can see the importance actually of, of uh, squeegeeing the boat out. I use that sponge, which is, I don't know where it's from. Oh, over there. And I always try and get all the water out. And today that's really paid off because there's absolutely no, nothing frozen in here at all. Um, no water in here at all, um, which is great. You don't really want frozen water in a wooden boat, especially because it just plays havoc with paint surfaces and varnish. So that's all looking really good. I'm really chuffed. Boat's in good nick. Um, so now the next job is to get this uh, different gaff on. So we'll do that now. Here's the two gaffs or yards, I think is the official name. Interestingly, one, the old one is on the right and my, my, new, my original one that came the boat is on the left. That old one is shorter, <laughs> which is interesting. And it's substantially lighter, especially around here. You can see the wood is much thinner there. It almost looks like someone's made this one because it thins down there. And it may have just been cut short, I don't know. So I got the two sails out and current sails on the left, reefing sails on the right. And weirdly, despite the gaff being shorter from the old sails, the sail itself looks massively longer. <laughs> I've just flipped this sail round. I had the sail the wrong way round, so now you can see they're exactly the same height. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just fold that one on top to check the size and shape. And then we'll know where we are, I'd hoped. There we are. So you can see both sails, they're, they're actually exactly the same shape, which is good news. We've got some sunshine. 
probably make awful video video that but we've got some nice sunshine look at that hello <laughs> um, i'm just threading the sail onto the the old gap i'm going to refer to these this equipment now as the new and the old the old is the old stuff i bought the new stuff is what came with the uh with the boat so uh i'm going to put the old sail on the old gaff <coughs> And then we need to make sure it's attached. I can already see the sail's a bit big for that gaff, to be frank. So let's get it down. It's already got some line here, so I'm going to try and get it tied in, but as close to the top here as I can. So there she is. Sail is up. Originally, I thought... Uh, the uh, I think oh god is that the clue or the tack but that that connector there um wouldn't reach but it's amazing when you get the kicker on and then you get the sail on and then hoist it everything seems to fit and that's tightened up as far as it'll go I mean my 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 original stroke new sail is still quite baggy here when it's uh when it's tight but there's not much I can do about that. So there's the sail up. There's a few little things like flapping here, but I think if you put the battens in, that would probably sort that out. I didn't realize the bat, you don't want the battens in just yet. I can use the battens from my other sail, but at least the sail fits. Um, I also measured, I realized that it doesn't really matter how high or long this gaff is. It, what matters is where that, that little, piece that the rope the halyard connects to and if that distance from there to there is the same and it is I, I just brought it down it's 170 centimeters there to there if that's the same as on this this one from there to the top then technically the height should be the same so idea number one is i've bought this this is the main sail halyard for for a wayfarer and i've measured it i forget how many meters it is but i've measured it and it should be long enough to go from the top of the sail all the way down to here and to cleat it off here to create a main halyard for the sail now this is where originally uh, earlier in the video i mentioned that um there's a little hole been drilled in the the old gaff and that line is going to go all the way up the mast <clears throat> all the way up the, to the top of the gaff through that hole which is in the correct orientation and it's going to attach to the sail so essentially it's going to allow me then to lower the sail to the right position for the reefing and it will allow me to do it very very easily like on a real yacht so that's the idea what we'll do is then I'm going to also now measure the sail with which I can actually use the one I've got down here that's why I was actually working trying to work out whether they were the same size so I can then work out areas of the sail and I can then work out roughly where the uh, sail needs to be lowered to, to get say 50% sail area. And then we can start to mark off where holes will need to go. And I could even punch holes out if I'm really careful to give them a little test to make sure the sail sits as it should do. So that's the idea. So the first thing I need to do is lower the gaff and kind of attach this line to it to see if we can get that working it may need a downhaul so it, i can't remember if they've if this uh, line is long enough to do a down and an uphaul um it may not need a downhaul you can just pull the sail down so we'll give that a little test now you can see here so i've taken the line and it's gonna go run down the the gaff that way I hope and I've just done it use a figure of eight knots at the moment so it's gone through there and through the sail and you can see uh, if I could just give that a pull that does work my big 
issue will be how much friction there is, but actually that friction is from the, I can't push the sail down. So it'd be, yeah, it's how much friction this hole's gonna cause on the rope. But anyway, let's haul the, the gaff back up and, uh, and see, and see where we are with this line. So you can see at the moment, the sail's not coming down at all, but can we pull it down? Uh, the answer to that is not easily. But let's give it another go from this side. So that is somewhat of a disaster. Yeah, so I actually noticed there was a split in this gaff. Uh, you can actually see where there is a bit of a split and some water ingress got into the wood. So as I pulled this through here, it's just had a bit too much force and it's had the effect of just splitting that. But actually, if you look carefully, there are two screw holes and you can see with the black where there's been a bit of ingress of water in those. So actually, I think it might be those two screw holes that have caused the split. So what we could do is put some tie-its around this uh, to see if we can still prove the concept. I just put the main sheet in and cleated it off at the jib cleat there because I was uh, worried this was going to swing. The wind's picking up a little bit, as you can see from the sail. <clears throat> so I've set that all back up again. You might just be able to see on the top of the sail <clears throat> of the gaff there, there's a little tie-it that's hopefully stopping that from splitting. And we're going to give this another, another go. So that should be technically loose. We should be able to pull on that. Oh, there you go. So that will pull down now. Actually, that's worked really easily. Now the bit acid test is, can we pull it up? And the answer to that is yes. Okay, the answer to that is, is yes. <laughs> Let's try that again. So it will come down. There you go, and let's try and get it up. Okay. And then we could just tie that off on one of the main cleats, fast cleats there. That is a success. So that's the idea. So the idea I've got is to do my reefing like this. So we're gonna work out where say 50% is, so say for argument's sake, 50% is along this seam here, there. We would put an eyelet there, and all we'd need to do is get the eyelet connected in here. We would then make sure this halyard is then tight, to keep the sail tight. And then we would need to just run the sail over Obviously that would be tight, and let's say it's here, and then we just need to have the sail there, and then we'll work out the reefing points in between. And then our reefing points would be, kind of, it's hard to show, but there, maybe three or four, I don't know yet, and they would be, they just have string, and then you would just roll up, and string round tight. So, there you go. I'm really pleased with that. Now you can see how those battens help shape the sail. Um, I think all sails have a batten in them, have battens in them. There you go. And it looks beautiful, that sail, doesn't it? In many respects, almost looks as, as tight and taut as my newer sail. So, I'm really pleased with that. 
So next job is to work out the area we need. I've got the sail out here and I've got my tape measure. I've got my trusty phone, which I need a calculator. The first thing I've done is to check the official sail area of the mirror dinghy, which is, I, I'm a metric guy, I'm not that old. So I'm gonna be doing this in meters and centimeters. Sorry to any Americans or uh, people that don't use centimeters, but it's 4.6 meters squared. So what I'm gonna do, I think the sail is roughly a, tr a, a right angle triangle. It's a bit bigger and we'll take that into account. So I'm gonna measure down here, which I've already measured as it's literally 3.97 meters. And I'm gonna measure across and then we'll do that calculation. So I've just done that calculation. So I've done 397 centimetres by, I think it was 215 centimetres. Multiplied that together, you would get the area of a square and then divided it by two, which is 40, 42,000, so it's 4.26 square metres. Now, the mirror said 4.6 square meters but as you can see on the sail there's a bit of a flange along here and there's a bit of a you know fairly good curve there so i think we're we're roughly there if when we do the reefing we'll maybe try and do it just around 50 and then maybe smaller so i'm i'm, I'm now going to work out where we need the reefs do we need 75 percent 50%. I only want to put two in, I don't want to put any more in. Or do we go 50 and 25%? Um, oh, sorry, 50 and 75, meaning there's only 25% of the sale left. Uh, or do we go 30%, 60%? Or 33, 66? Uh, I'm not quite sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll work that out and then we'll see um, what they look like with, with the tape measure across. So, by trial and error really I've done this. Um, I've got three reef points here now. The first one here is 25%. That would leave that piece of sail as 25%. Down here is 50. So that would leave 50% sail out. And this one's 75 that would leave 75% sail out. Um, my thoughts on this are, I think taking that much sail off isn't gonna make any difference on a mirror. I think the weather, I think 50% really is where it needs to be. Um, I like the 25%, it's far enough away from the 50 to be of use. It's a bit of a handkerchief and bizarrely, I think that's, it looks very similar to the size of my jib. So for me, that's like a real get out of jail free card. You know, if you do get into a really crazy condition, you know, you can drop your jib. You've got a tiny little handkerchief that will hopefully get you home. So I quite like the idea of a, a tiny little uh, reef point. Um, I think the 50% is, I just think that looks good. I just think that looks like a, I think that looks like the right amount of sail. 75%, I don't know. I think you'd just be faffing about with that. The idea could be to move this up to say, you know, here, which say it leaves, for argument's sake, 60%. But again, 60% is then very close to 50%. You wouldn't really need both. So do you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think we're going to go for the 25% and the 50% and we're not going to do anything below the 50 and we're going to see how we get on with that. So I've got this uh, part of the video on super view because it's much easier to get the whole um, sail in. Uh, apologies for that. I've measured um, or I've reversed the measurements because I was measuring from the top of the sail so I've minus that from the sail so I can measure from the bottom down or bottom up. So what I'm gonna do is now reef the sail to roughly, or to the 
uh, which is 81 centimetres. So it's roughly, so it's that point there. Okay, let's release this halyard. Okay, I'm gonna have to measure that again quickly. It's literally halfway between those two there. So I'm gonna put the reef roughly there. And then that would look like this. Something like that. I like that. Of course the wind's just got up, now we're trying to do this. <laughs> so that's good. I like that. Okay, what I'm gonna do, just gonna tie this around here very quickly. Because that will just hold the sail roughly more where I need it to be. So that will look like, yeah, probably that. So that's 60%. Let's now bring the sail down to 127. Uh, so that will be another 46. That's right, isn't it? 46, yeah. So let's bring it down another 46. Which, we're only doing it roughly. So there's a 46, which would be, say, there. Oh, and the wind's dropped, which is good, good for us. Don't like to drop the wind. Now, the only problem with this being here is this baton. It is not... Well, it'd be like that, if you see. So that's possibly going to need a wreath think or will that be okay anyway let's see what that looks like 50% there's a lot of sail gone there and then the last one will be 25% so that's going to be 212 which will be another 70 82 minus 3 no plus 3 30. 70, 82, 85. Gosh, that's a lot of sail to take out. I guess as it gets thinner, you need to take out more to, to get the, wait, so what did I say? 85. 85, that's right. 207, that's right, 85. So that'll be there, right on that seam. So let's pull it down again. That will be right on that seam. And let's see what that looks like. I can actually hold this. And that would be something like that. And that'll be 25% sail. Yeah, you can't go any more because there's not enough sail like in the halyard groove i think i'd be worried that would pull out but i think i think that's good i think we can i think we can go with that yeah i think we're gonna have lunch and we're gonna see what's what um but i still don't fancy sailing in this freezing cold weather oh this is luxury um it's just been snowing like a horrible icy sleety snow uh and i've decided to come in a camper van i'm starving hungry actually it's about 11 o'clock i'm gonna have some uh, nuts um and a coffee so mm, oh god anything would taste great right now i'm so hungry um and then we're gonna sit in here contemplate the world work out what's next <laughs>